Welcome to today's watercolour demo. I'm going to show you how to paint these vibrant zesty oranges hanging off a tree. We'll use the wet and wet technique with areas of high contrast to really define shapes and help those oranges pop. Along the way I'll share loads of tips on keeping your watercolour sketch super loose. Hello there, I'm Omar. I'm a sketchbook artist, food illustrator and also author. I've been developing a loose watercolour style for many years and people have often wondered how I keep it so spontaneous and fresh. In this demo, I'll share advice on staying relaxed while you paint, trusting your instincts and not being afraid to make mistakes. Let me show you the reference image that I use from Unsplash so you understand how I interpreted this photo. I will give you a link in the description. If you squint your eyes, the lightest areas are the highlights on the side of the oranges and also the sky in the background through the trees. If we turn it into a black and white image and play with the levels, you can see this effect much better. Developing the ability to see the differences between light and dark areas is crucial skill for any artist. By honing this skill, you can rely less on colour and instead emphasise the importance of value contrast in your artwork. I'll also talk more about making certain choices and how those choices contribute to the overall effect of the painting. Now let's begin. I rarely start with a pencil sketch but I wanted to make sure to plot out the area where the oranges are going to be hanging. There are five in a group towards the middle and two just a bit further down to the left. I'm using an A4 size sketchbook by Etcher. I have added a few of the main leaves, those surrounding the oranges, not all of them because that would just be too much. I start by partially filling in with cadmium yellow. Don't worry about making them all perfect, let them be a little bit wonky and irregular just like real fruit. The best tip is to leave more of the paper showing than you think you need. Then I drop in cadmium orange in the parts where the oranges are in shadow. Don't fiddle with them, just leave them as they are. Now starting on the greens, we're going to add the darker leaves first and build up from there. It's a mixture of sap green with Payne's grey and some indigo. I'm using a quill brush which is equivalent to a uh, number 10 round so it's quite chunky as I want it to hold lots of pigment and wash. When working with watercolours it can be helpful to work on a large piece of paper as well as it allows you to make a lot bigger and more expressive brush strokes. You can see that I'm using quite a limited colour palette for this piece and limiting your colour choices can help keep your painting loose to avoid overworking. Also be mindful to leave some white spaces between the oranges and the leaves to represent the light shining through them. When working with watercolours it's important to work quickly and decisively to avoid overworking that paint. Watercolour is a medium that dries quickly which means that once you've laid down a stroke of paint you have a limited amount of time to work with it before it dries. If you keep going into the paint after it's dried it can become muddy and lose its vibrancy resulting in paint that looks overworked and lacks the freshness and spontaneity that watercolour is known for. Now it's time to add the pops of blue that you can see shining through the leaves. I am leaving slight outlines around each leaf, I'm not going right up to them. And this will allow for some happy accidents later on. Uh, watercolour is a medium that can be unpredictable and sometimes the best results actually come from those surprises. Working quickly doesn't mean rushing your painting or sacrificing quality for speed. It does mean being efficient and deliberate with your brush strokes and making the most of the time you have before the paint dries. I'm now adding pots of blue towards the middle of the piece so we're almost doing negative painting. I am painting around the leaf shapes. Although the reference photo shows a mass of green I don't really want that for my particular piece. That's why I'm using quite a lot of blue to break up some of that mass. You'll notice that I have actually left some of the leaves white and I think that really helps with the contrast and it still tells the story, you can still recognise this as oranges on a tree. It really is amazing what our brains can do to fill in the gap so stay relaxed about this stage. I think the really dark blue adds so much drama. 
I'm defining the edges of those oranges by giving them a really dark background. If you look at the close-up of the finished piece, you can see how the pigments have intermingled, but also there's an incredible amount of white paper showing through. And don't be afraid to let this happen because I think it creates a wonderful sense of lightness and airiness. It's really important that you step back and assess after you've created each piece. Take breaks from your paintings and this will help you identify areas that are becoming too tight and give you the opportunity to make changes before it's too late. I certainly hope I've inspired you to paint these oranges. If you do want to share on social media, including Instagram, please use the hashtag OmarYouTube. If you've liked this video, please do give me a thumbs up leave a comment and also subscribe. Until next time, stay amazing.